Mmm, it's an orange juice. The Electro Dragon introduces a new mechanic into the game, the Chain Lightning. The E-Drag has a 3.5 tile range. The Chain Lightning can bounce up to 3 times. Each subsequent bounce is up to 3.5 tiles long on each bounce. Each unit that is hit by the Chain Lightning will be stunned by 0.5 seconds. So it's kind of like a Zap or an Electro Wizard hitting it. Each Lightning Strike at Tournament Standard deals 159 damage up to 3 times. This means if you hit 3 Goblins, it's going to deal 159 damage to each Goblin. If there's only one target, that one unit is going to be dealt 159 damage. It is not multiplied by 3. No bounce, no extra damage. This Chain Lightning attack is completely different from the Electro Wizard. If an E-Wiz is attacking a single unit, it'll deal the full 192 damage. If the E-Wiz attacks two units, both units only get dealt 100 damage, no longer enough to kill an Ice Spirit. The Electro Dragon's attack stuns, but they are slightly different mechanics. Once the E-Drag locks onto its first target, it'll always continue attacking that first unit for as long as that unit remains within range. The Chain Lightning, on the other hand, functions a bit differently. The second and third bounce will always bounce to the nearest unit. So why is this useful information? Because if you have a support troop you need to protect behind a tank, you can plant a huge swarm card between your giant and that musketeer, even though the Electro Dragon is already locked onto the giant. That Chain Lightning stops bouncing onto the musketeer, it's going to start bouncing to the nearest troops, in this case, the skeletons. Since Swarm units can stop the Electro Dragon really well, Zap Synergize is very good with it. Eliminates the Swarm, boom, support units are now vulnerable to the Chain Lightning once again. A cool easter egg is that the Electro Dragon has 4 spikes. The spines light up until it's ready to attack. This is not a charge attack. Zapping it does not reset its attack. The spines lighting up are purely a cosmetic indicator of when it's going to attack. Its attack is really nifty. It can completely stop a battle ram and the barbarians from that ram. This is 5 for 4. It's a positive elixir trait and now you're going to be able to go in for a big counter attack. It just wrecks chargers. Dark Prince stands no chance. Completely stops it. With its chain lightning it does not care if there's a tank like an ice golem or even a giant. That Dark Prince is not getting through. Rascals are in Incredibly weak against the Electro Dragon. It hits the boy, bounces off onto the girl, and within two attacks, that girl is completely dead. Lathahound gets absolutely wrecked by the Electro Dragon. Even though it only deals 159 damage to the Lathahound, and even though it attacks really slow, it does stun the Lathahound temporarily, slowing it down a bit. This is whatever, but when it pops, those bounces destroys the Lava Pups. It just absolutely wrecks the Lava Pups, because if you look really closely, that attack finishes off the Lava Hound, then it bounces off and hits two Lava Pups. Despite its slow attack and its somewhat low damage per unit, it can still stop a balloon from connecting to the tower. The bomb does hit the tower though, so consider using an Ice Spirit to completely stop it with the E-Drag. Its chain mechanic is just so good on defense, it just annihilates the skeletons that the Witch spawns. Very efficient at tanking the witch and taking out the skeletons. The night witch by itself stands no chance. She spawns two bats. The chain lightning hits them all. The night witch can attack air. She dies really fast to the electro dragon. Even with the tank, the electro dragon just does such an incredible job in defense to take out all types of support troops with its chain lightning. Despite its slow attack and only chaining up to three units per attack, it's still enough to take out a skarmy. If you're in a pinch, you can absolutely stop a goblin with an E-Drag. The goblins will still get two shots in your tower, so you only use this 5 elixir beast if you're having a bad rotation. If the E-Drag is played in the center, you can kite it with any unit. An ice golem can easily kite the dragon. A cannon cart can hilariously kite it, and now you've got to deal with the cannon cart. Even a barbarian barrel can kite it, it's, it's ridiculous. But like a balloon, a good E-Drag player will place this flying unit at the edge of the map so you won't be able to kite it. When they do that, just tank it. A single attack from E-Drag is it's not that strong. Ice Golem can stop it pretty well from reaching your princess. Goblin Giant is like an Ice Golem on steroids. E-Drag stands no chance against the Goblin Giant. Do not chain lightning those basket goblins. Do not pass go. Do not collect 200. Baby Dragon, one-on-one. -on -one, 
will win against the Electro Dragon just because the E Drag only deals 159 damage and has lower health. Anything that has a decent amount of health can tank the Electro Dragon fairly well. The best thing you can do is plant your counter away so that the Chain Lightning has no chance to bounce. Of course, you can kill swarms pretty well like Fire Spirits. So if you really want to take out the E-Drag, wait till it gets one hit on your tower, then plant Fire Spirits to just destroy it. Hunter is going to be the ultimate tank killer in the game. It can very quickly bring down the Electro Dragon's health. It won't one-shot the E-Drag, so be smart with your Hunter. Of course, the hard counter to the E-Drag is Lightning. It is 6 for 5 though, so if you're going to take out the E-Drag, clip a tower, clip something for that juicy value damage. Battle Ram is not a Lightning Rod for the E-Drag. The E-Drag has more health than Barbarians. Lightning will strike the highest health units. Battle Ram only works as a Lightning Rod in 3M decks because the Battle Ram and the Barbarians have more health than those Musketeers. Typically, in a Golem push, you might see a Night Witch and maybe even an Electro Dragon. The Electro Dragon is the highest health unit in the game that dies to Lightning. Lightning will almost always strike the E-Drag just because of how high his health is. Despite minions dying to two Chain Lightnings, it's just enough to stop the E-Drag from touching your Princess Tower if it's by itself. For even cheaper counters, bats will stop it completely, but you must surround the E-Drag so that all the bats get enough hits. If you don't surround the bats, that E-Drag's gonna get a hit off your tower, so just surround the drag with the bats and you'll be dandy. Realistically, some of the top cards to counter the Electro Dragon are cards that can outrange it. There's gonna be stuff like Musketeer, Flying Machine, Magic Archer, and even the Dark Goblin. This beefy boy can tank one attack and stops it completely. You don't want to fireball or poison an Electro Dragon. Treat it like a baby dragon. Would you really want to fireball a baby dragon by itself? Not really. Well, maybe if there are nearby troops clumped up, then yeah. Can Fireball completely stop an Electro Dragon with the help of your Princess Tower? Yeah, it can. Fireball can also stop a baby dragon, but let's be real. There are so many more efficient ways to counter these dragons, like a humble ice golem. Since the Chain Lightning travels exactly 3.5 tiles, you can activate the King Tower with any single unit. Plop down a Knight, it'll activate the King. If you want to activate it for one Elixir, use an Ice Spirit. Boom! You can activate the king with an elixir collector when you plant it behind the princess tower. But do not do this. Just because you can doesn't mean it's okay. This is 636 damage to your princess tower. That is more damage than a rocket and a fireball combined on your princess tower. Your pump will only replenish one elixir. This is the biggest negative elixir trade in all of history. Here's what you want to do though. Find units that can absorb or at least stop three electro dragon attacks. Throw something down the guards to absorb three hits. Then plant whatever unit you want in the back to connect the Prince's Tower to the King. Boom! Your Princess only took one hit, your King is activated, everyone's happy. Well, except your opponent. If you perfectly time a Snowball, he'll only get one hit on your tower. This is perfect. Then, use the Ice Spear to connect the Chain Lightning onto the King, and now you're golden. If you want to get all Mr. Fancy Pants here, Ice Spirit tanks one attack, freezes the Dragon, and damages the Dragon. It'll only get one hit on your Princess Tower. This is... Juicy to know to activate the King Tower. Ice Spirit plus any single unit to connect the Prince's Tower to the King. You can even do this with a Tombstone, it's pretty easy. Just lure the Electro Dragon with the Skeletons. It's best to play the Tombstones directly in front of the King Tower. Spawners are generally just really good at activating the King. Let's say you have a 4-2 Goblin Hut placement on the map. Plop down an Ice Spirit, that connects, and that's gonna bridge the distance between your King Tower and your Spawner. Serves them right for trying to snipe your Goblin Hut. You can activate the King Tower with the Princess precisely on this tile, but your tower takes 300 damage and you lose a Princess in the process. This is absolutely worth it if you can activate the King Tower within the first minute of the game and you're able to afford it because your Princess Tower is at full health. The Electro Dragon Sentinel alone is incredibly easy to activate with the King Tower. Do not put the Electro Dragon in decks that are instant loss with the King activation. This will be Graveyard decks. It's nearly impossible to recover with an activated King using Graveyard. This also includes Goblin Barrel decks. Well, not impossible, it does shut down a lot of Goblin Barrel damage when a King is activated. The Goblin Barrel tank synergy is severely compromised. Glitch or design? The E-Dragon's Chain Lightning attack can stun a bandit mid-dash. This stops her dash completely, making her walk to the tower like a peasant. I always thought her dash was invulnerable. Huh. Glitch or design? The Electro Dragon's Chain Lightning will bounce onto a ghost that is invisible. I mean, Fireball does hit an invisible ghost, so... Is it fair? 
I don't know. Well, the Electro Wizard's attack doesn't just suddenly split onto an invisible ghost. Remember, not to use E-Drag in decks that you can't afford king activations. Never send in the E-Drag by itself. That's asking for an easy king activation. Always use the E-Drag as a defensive card to snowball into a huge counter push. E-Drag works best as a defensive card, not a bridge spamming card, just because of the way it moves really slowly. So take advantage of its really slow move speed for those nice big counter pushes. If you can't afford a big snowball push, at the very least, put an Ice Golem, put a Miner, put whatever to tank it. This is going to make it a lot more troublesome for them to activate their King Tower, because they're going to have to worry about other things as well. Hope this was useful. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more quality OJing.